Alaska, positioned at the far west of the North American continent, is described as one of the most remarkable and largely unexplored regions of the United States. Discoveries made so far reveal that Alaska harbors 39 mountains, over 3,000 lakes, more than 12,000 rivers, and over 27,000 glaciers. With these features and its rich wildlife species, Alaska stands among the unique places on Earth. However, Alaska also has a dark and mysterious side. Since 1988, records show that approximately 61,000 people have gone missing in Alaska. This means an average of 1,800 people go missing each year, with some years seeing the number of disappearances reach up to 2,500. This situation has led people to refer to Alaska as the land of the missing. Some individuals claim that these disappearances in Alaska occur in a triangle system similar to the Bermuda Triangle. However, the disappearances in Alaska are not limited to this triangle. Such incidents occur throughout the state, and the missing individuals often leave no trace. This week, we will examine these strange disappearances in Alaska and try to understand the reasons behind these events. Before the video, if you subscribe to the channel, you will make me really happy. Now we can continue the video. Nome, situated far west in Alaska and quite remote from other settlement areas, began to attract migration in the early 20th century due to the gold deposits discovered in the region, experiencing significant development during this period. However, over time, there has been a decrease in the number of people coming to the town, leading to a substantial decrease in investments. Nevertheless, today, the town still functions as an important trade and transportation center due to its harbors and airports. The main reason for this is the considerable distance between Nome and other major cities, with thousands of kilometers separating it from places like Anchorage. The town is so remote from other settlement areas that embarking on a journey by car towards Nome in a state like Alaska, where freezing cold prevails, is almost tantamount to suicide. Additionally, the roads leading to rural areas in the town are in poor condition, and there is hardly any direct road access to major settlement areas. This situation has led to the intense use of the town's harbors and airports, enabling the town to survive. However, despite all these challenges, Nome is located in an extremely isolated and desolate place compared to other settlements. This situation has contributed to the town having a dark and mysterious side. Especially between 1960 and 2004, approximately 30 people, mostly from surrounding villages, disappeared under mysterious circumstances in Nome, leaving no trace behind. While this might seem normal at first glance, and one might think that the disappearance of 30 people over a 44-year period could be considered ordinary. The average population of the town between 1960 and 2004 was only 2,900. This indicates that the number of disappearances in the town is well above the national average. The families of the missing individuals have even claimed that the local police made no effort to solve these disappearances and campaigned for years to find the missing, alleging neglect from law enforcement. And finally, in 2005, the mother of the missing Eric Apatiki reached her goal by sending a petition to the state prosecutor. Eric Apatiki who went missing on October 5, 2004, had set out early that day to visit his pregnant girlfriend in Nome Town. However, before starting his journey, his mother had warned him not to go to the town, mentioning that bad things happen to those who go there. Despite not believing much in the tales circulating among the people, Eric continued on his way. However, shortly afterward, he called his girlfriend's family to report that he never arrived. Upon this news, an extensive search operation was launched both on land and at sea, but despite all efforts, not a single trace of Eric was found. After Eric's mother reached out to the state prosecutor, the case was taken over by the FBI, and all other missing cases related to the town were investigated. FBI profilers determined that the majority of people who went missing in and around the town were males, and they often went to local bars or excessively drank before disappearing. According to the FBI, these individuals likely got lost and ventured out of town due to being heavily intoxicated, succumbing to harsh weather conditions, and losing their lives. 
However, the real question at this point is, what is causing something or someone to lead individuals out of the town's safe environment and away? Along with these questions, it is noteworthy that Gnome Town has no mountainous terrain or hills in its vicinity. In fact, there are no wooded areas around the town. This suggests that over the years, remains of the missing should have been discovered. The FBI also investigated the possibility of a killer or a group of killers operating within the local community, but could not find conclusive evidence supporting this possibility. And finally, the most famous missing person case in the town occurred in 2016. Joseph Balderas, a 36-year-old man working as a legal clerk in the 2nd District Court, was known in the community. On June 24, a Friday, he told his friends that he would go hunting after work, but on Monday morning, June 27, he didn't show up for work. Tracy, one of his colleagues, called the police station, expressing concern that Joseph hadn't come to work and something might have happened to him. Upon this, the police began questioning if anyone had seen Joseph in the town. Two witnesses stated they had seen Joseph's car on the Nome Council Highway, about 70 kilometers away. Police officer Timothy Smith rushed to the scene and indeed found Joseph Balderas's car parked near a threshold in the vicinity of the Nome Council Highway. Using a megaphone, he began calling for Joseph but could only hear the sound of the wind around him. Understanding the situation, Smith began inspecting Joseph's car, but he couldn't find any signs of damage, and there were no traces when he examined the nearby ground. Despite extensive efforts, Thermal cameras and search dogs were deployed to the area, but the dog stopped at a certain point while trying to pick up Joseph's scent and didn't proceed further. No results were obtained from the search efforts that day, and Joseph Balderas has been missing for approximately six years now. When Joseph went missing, searches were conducted for about five months, involving numerous law enforcement agencies. However, despite all efforts, not a single trace of Joseph was found. A local court declared Joseph legally dead about a year after his disappearance. The Balderas case remains one of the most mysterious events in Gnome's history. A man with no health issues or enemies, loved by many in the town with an extensive family and friend group, Joseph's disappearance baffled detectives. No signs of a struggle or similar evidence were found at the scene or around the vehicle, indicating he hadn't been attacked. The most frightening aspect of this disappearance is that similar incidents have occurred in the town. Certainly, the disappearances in Alaska are not limited to Nome Town. On June 4, 1999, 15-year-old Michael Palmer and two friends had attended a party near Meadow Lakes. After the party, they hopped on their bikes to head home together. However, Michael started falling behind, and after a while, he disappeared from sight. His friends waited for him, but when he didn't show up, they went back to search for him. Despite extensive searches, no trace of Michael or his bike could be found. The next day, Michael's bike was discovered 38 kilometers away near the Susitna River, and his sneakers were found near an airstrip. However, despite comprehensive search efforts, Michael's remains were never found. This incident repeated itself 11 years later in April 2010 when Michael's brother, Chuck went missing in a similar manner. At the time of Chuck's disappearance, he was part of a group riding snowmobiles near the Talkitna town. Like his brother, Chuck had fallen behind and unintentionally separated from his group. When his friends went back to look for him, they found no trace of Chuck. Shortly afterward, aerial searches by authorities located Chuck's snowmobile abandoned in an open plain, but there were no signs of him around the vehicle. What was intriguing was that the snowmobile seemed as if it had been suddenly lifted from the top because it had traveled in a straight line for a while and appeared to have stopped spontaneously. There were no footprints around the snowmobile indicating that Chuck had stepped off. Despite all investigations, no remains have been found for these two brothers. The Palmer family had lost two sons in remarkably similar ways. Was this an incredibly coincidental event? Or was there something in the wild nature of Alaska preying on them? The largest disappearance event in Alaska occurred on January 26, 1950, with the vanishing of a Douglas C-54 Sky Master military transport plane. The aircraft, carrying four people, 
was flying from Alaska to Montana and had its last radio contact in the second hour of its eight-hour flight. After that point, there was no further communication, and the aircraft could not be located two hours after takeoff. An operation called the Mike Operation, involving search and rescue efforts, was launched an hour after the plane failed to arrive in Montana. Despite the involvement of 85 aircraft and 7,000 personnel in the searches, no traces of the aircraft or its occupants could be found, even after scouring an area of approximately 1,200 kilometers. During the search for the aircraft, several other planes also went missing, with some crashing into the McClintock Mountains. The crash of AB, 36 bomber carrying nuclear weapons in British Columbia led to the suspension of search operations and the decision not to search for the Sky Master again. The disappearance of the Sky Master is considered one of the largest groups of American military personnel ever lost. The question of what might be causing such disappearances in Alaska has not been definitively answered. These incidents are often associated with challenging climatic and geographical conditions, high mountainous areas, continental climates, and weather variability. Additionally, finding aircraft and individuals lost in the vast and remote areas of Alaska can be challenging, complicating search and rescue efforts. However, there are numerous speculations about the exact reasons behind such incidents, and each case has its unique circumstances. The speculations about the reasons for the disappearances in Alaska often focus on mysterious explanations such as aliens, paranormal entities, or undiscovered creatures like Bigfoot. However, there could actually be a quite logical explanation for these events. Firstly, Alaska is home to various predatory animal species, including cougars, wolves, and polar bears. These animals can occasionally roam in areas just 20 minutes away from towns or cities. This increases the risk of encountering these predatory creatures during a hike outside the town, leading to unintentional loss of life. The challenging natural conditions in Alaska, even for survival experts, are a significant factor in explaining these incidents. Alaska features unexplored areas like dense forests, massive cliffs, and barren tundras. Many regions remain untouched by human hands, and even between towns, the lack of proper roads is notable. Therefore, while navigating Alaska, one might encounter risks such as falling into a snow-covered crevice, being hit by a frozen tree, or freezing to death while trying to find your way in panic. Additionally, the body of a person who goes missing in Alaska can be completely concealed by up to two meters of snowfall in a single day due to heavy snowfall. This situation could explain why the missing individuals are never found again. However, it may still be challenging to entirely explain certain cases, especially those involving the Michael Brothers or the Sky Master incident, solely through these factors. Thank you very much for watching the video until the end. If you like and subscribe to the video, you will make me very happy. Thank you again.